I want to dive the fuck in. I saw a few. Okay, okay, sorry. Um, I think the. Sorry. She girl boss too close to the sun. Girl boss a little too hard. If you are working for those brands, you know, big pump playlists, all those conventions, uh, and you're still listening. We're, we're probably never getting invited again, but that's okay. Ramble. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Pretty Basic. We are here in the studio today. We have Miss Remy Cruz Thank to the so right much. of me. To the right. Everyone look at the teeth. Thank you so much for the nice comment. For people who don't know why this is very significant, Remy got her veneers. They look so good. They're pristine. She looks just like, I didn't think you could get hotter, bitch. You Thank went you from so an 100 much. to a, a 500. That's so kind. And let's say the cap is 500. Like, you just can't get hotter. Thank you so much. And in case you guys are not watching video, you should because Alicia has bangs now. <gasps> I do. The bangs are banging. The bangs are banging. I want I want merch. I'm not really doing merch right now, but like, I want merch that says the bangs are banging. The bangs are banging. <laughs> um, I will say say this is gonna happen with you soon but not as quick because obviously veneers is a little more of a process the amount of people that have sent me photos and videos of them cutting their bangs or telling me like you make me want to cut my bangs but part of me is like scared because I'm like I don't want to be responsible if you cut them like how you did when you were younger damn she was well after <laughs> me. insert photo we've talked about it before but Remy did in fact try to cut her own bangs and it was traumatic. I saw someone, um, someone even responded because in my video where I like talk about getting my bangs, there was, I, I had asked what were your horror story of having bangs? Cause my mom used to cut them very crooked for me. And she said that um, she cut them down to the root thinking that that would be a good idea. And I thought of you. I've learned, you know, I don't know why I didn't consider that when I was cutting them, but we all learn, we all grow, hair grows back. So even if anybody cuts their bangs and they hate it yes. and they blame you, it's hair, it'll grow back. I know, but I just, I think of the PTSD that I had from my mom cutting mine very uneven. I'm like, I just, I hope, you know, but I will say people have sent me videos. And I'm like, yo, your hair looks so good. Uh, I have to admit what you cut the bangs and I was like, they're so cute. And then uh, the other day we were talking and you were like holding your bangs back and I saw <laughs> your bare forehead and I was like, oh damn. The bangs really do like look good. I never realized like Thank you. How big my forehead is. I was just is. gonna say that I don't mean to say that. But <laughs> no. like, it, it is a little large and She's I didn't like, know. She's like, damn, you got a big ass forehead. <laughs> I didn't notice till you were literally because she was holding him back like this, just Here, talking to I'll me. I'll do it for the video. I'll it's do it for the big. video. It's not like it wasn't like before. I was like, damn. No, but you're like, but wow. It's, like it's different. Is it a four is it a five head, do you think, or is it a forehead? I think it's a forehead. Is it a five head? It's, a, I don't know. it's like a four and a half head, I'd say. <laughs> What's mine? Is, is mine? I think mine might Yours even be a three, three head. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. I got so a small forehead. So I think that's why they. Head. I'm. Thank you so much. I have had a lot of people be like, "Wait, they they look extra good on you." Yeah. And I'm like, "It's because I have a big forehead, so I it like evens thought. out my face a little." But bit. I never noticed until now. I I see. That's so funny. What, what it could be? Big ass forehead over here. <laughs> Anyways. Um, it's because you have such a big brain. So big. Such a big brain. <laughs> so smart. And space. So new <laughs> space. Fuck me. So, as we know, we've been TikTok <laughs> queens lately. And trying. there was something that's been popping up. And we got tagged in a bunch. And a lot of people were asking us to talk about it. And it's so many conversations that you and I had on our own. Yeah, oh, and we yeah. figured it'd be great to bring it to the pod. Bring it to the pod. We got tagged in a ton of... TikTok specifically, I really wasn't tagged on anything on Instagram, which is interesting, but- I got a few Instagrams. You did? Mm -hmm. We got people saying that they wanted to hear our thoughts on just some recent things. One of them being Emma Chamberlain's new episode, not new, it's not. It's literally like three months old by this point, um, saying that influencer culture is dead and like our thoughts on that and everything. When that podcast first dropped, I sent you the episode and I was like, oh my God, I want everyone to listen to this because I want to like talk about it, brainstorm. Like I want to start doing this more where you like tell all your friends like, hey- listen to this podcast, read this book, watch this movie or something, and let's all come together and discuss it. Like, I, I'm kind of like craving that lately. So this was one of my attempts, which we still never got dinner to do it, but we did talk about gonna, it. I was gonna be honest, <laughs> I didn't listen to it. I knew you didn't. But only because like, it was triggering me. It was? Well, like the idea of it triggers oh, me. Oh no, I see, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I like, I just don't want to, hear it because you're like then la, it la, might la. be true and then I'm not gonna have a job <laughs> no I get it I get it but that caused a lot of uproar just on TikTok with a lot of different creators of different sizes a lot of people were like discussing it talking about it so that was the first thing and then the second thing which kind of goes in with this so I do think this is gonna be a really interesting episode was the recent VidCon mm -hmm. that just happened mm -hmm. and 
we got tagged with people saying, what are your thoughts? A lot of people had meetups and no one came. There were different creators who showed that no one came to their meetup, but they have like a million followers or more than that on TikTok. Like what, what's going on? What are your thoughts? So we're giving the people what they want. I like, <laughs> I want to dive the fuck in. I do too. So Alicia and I, in case you're new or my favorite thing lately, sorry, <laughs> I just came, came to life where people that come up and they're like, oh my God, I love your TikToks. Someone created a smoothie that I, like a smoothie recipe and a girl like tagged me in it. And she was like, I saw this other TikToker and I was like, <laughs> AKA Remy is the Literally, TikToker. Literally, I was a TikToker, yeah. She's like, I saw this other TikToker do this recipe. I'm going to tag her. And I was tagged. I was like, oh my God, she thinks I'm a TikToker. So anyways, so sorry. Back to the point. <laughs> Alicia and I started off on YouTube. We've been doing YouTube for well over a decade now. So we are veterans in the space. Oh, we are OGs. And we have been to our fair share of VidCons. I believe my first year going was 2014, I want to say. No. You, earlier? I think... I think 14. I went my first VidCon ever, which in case you don't know what a VidCon is, mm -hmm. it is a convention. a convention that is put on in Anaheim, California, right by Disneyland. Sunny Anaheim, Sunny, California. Sunny, beautiful California. Anaheim, California. And I didn't realize it, but till honestly this year, but I didn't realize that like YouTube was the sponsor of VidCon. Yes. I thought that YouTube, I thought VidCon was a YouTube event for so long. So I think this is the first Interesting factoid to bring up. Um, this was the first year that TikTok sponsored. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I so agree. do you think YouTube sold it or has YouTube always just been the sponsor? No, I think VidCon is the company. <laughs> hashtag trademarked. But YouTube was the sole sponsor exclusively as mm. far as like platforms on that large of a scale. Remember there were always like the YouTube original banners. Yeah. Escape the night. Escape the night. Like, you, you knew you would walk in and see a huge YouTube Spot. Like it was, that's how oh, they're always like been. YouTube networks, each individually, like MCNs, which is a multi channel network, they each had their own like booths and like, yes. like things going on. So, long story short, VidCon is a convention for digital creators and all these large brands that either want to be known by the digital creators or in the space they go, they like build these insane booths, um, everything from like tech companies, I feel like, to like food companies, just like places for you know brands to be known there's also like panels like creators will have panels there's meet and greet basically it's like a giant convention to like meet your favorite creators you get free stuff from these booths it's like you buy a ticket for I believe it's a three-day convention I want to say and you can like meet people you get to meet your internet friends like it's just like this really fun time for if you're a fan of digital creators I think to like meet people and network yeah. and like all those sorts of things I remember my first big con like experience was I'm in one of the main floors. I'm going up the big escalator uh -huh. where you can oversee everything. You just see a whole bunch of people. I hear screaming. I hear stampedes, shrieking, 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 screaming. And I look- Let me guess, David Dobrik. No. No? No. Who? It's OG. Zoella. No. Oh, remember the year that all the Brits came? Yes. That was keep like going, insane. Keep going, keep okay, going. Brits. Uh, uh, Alfie? Nope. Joe? Uh, nope. Oh my there, God. There were- there Wait. Yeah. Oh yep. fuck. Yep. What were their yep. names? Yep. Yep. The hot ones. Yep. Jack and Finn. Yes. 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 yes, yes. It was yes. one of them. <gasps> I kid you not. Hundreds. Like I see him in the middle with one security guard, like uh, not safe. Uh huh. Hundreds. <laughs> the sea of girls run, and I'm at. I'm. I'm on a. You know, a high point. You mm -hmm, know, we mm -hmm. have the. We have the view, and. It was insane. Like, I was like, holy shit, this is VidCon. Uh -huh. Like, they were all screaming and running. And my favorite is when, at the time, you would hear screaming and running. And people are like, who is it? Who is it? And then you hear people just, like, yell random names. I'm like, it's them. And then they don't even see them, but they just start they just running go. and going. It was pure pandemonium. It was I just crazy. realized, you said that was your first year, so that was 2014. David Dobrik wasn't even around yet. Oh, my God, crazy. I remember my first VidCon. I bought a ticket, and I drove myself to the convention center, and I, like, like met up, like tried to like make friends and like tried to network. I remember I have like I think one of my first Instagram photos I should pull it up is a photo of my literal like pass that like, I wrote on I that I bought. <laughs> it was so fun though. It's just it's so interesting how obviously like our first ones we went we were smaller creators. Yeah, very I literally small. bought my ticket. I think I actually did two or what are the ones the creator passes? Mm -hmm. They were out of those, so they gave me like one that was lower. Mm. 
And I can tell the girl was just doing me a favor. I literally, I probably bought the <laughs> lowest yeah, one. Yeah. It's just wild though, because obviously as the years went on, we went 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, 20, like all those years we went. And it quickly changed from not only like being a fan to as obviously our channels grew, then we went as actual creators. And then suddenly yeah. you're having your own meet and greet. And then suddenly you're behind the scenes in the green yeah. rooms. And oh like my God. you get to see different, like so different from the floor of the convention center, just going with the pass that you bought to being behind behind the scenes and seeing like the special green rooms and the special like gifting suites they put just for creators. When you check in, you get this like gift bag, you get a free mm -hmm. hotel room. Like it's really interesting seeing the, the whole, just the different sides of it everything. Was, I think weirdly enough, like I'm grateful that we had that experience of from buying to like not being involved to then being like asked to come to like having the treatment. And then, I mean, the last time I ever went to like a convention like that, it, it was meetings on me it was like a business yeah. meeting no I agree like the most recent VidCon I went to right before COVID hit I went literally had like three meetings and then went home yeah because it just shifted to be very just business very. and it's all now just about networking within brands and like I remember at one point I did this thing called like speed dating with different brands they put a bunch of creators in a room with like brand representatives and like give you like five minutes and they're like snacks next and you're just mm -hmm. like just trying to sell yourself yeah. which I hated because it was so stressful but as we know on the episode with Matt King I expressed my distaste for VidCon <laughs> but we didn't get very far into it yeah it's interesting because it's like the general consensus I feel like as us OG creators now with the idea of VidCon was a lot of us did go as fans initially and then we were yeah. invited and it's one of those things that I always talk about where it's like holy shit I'm invited oh my god they're giving me this hotel room oh yeah. my god I'm getting to do this meet and greet I'm doing all these things it's so exciting but then once you know time goes on and us creators started talking a little bit more I feel like we all kind of started to realize like oh wait VidCon is kind of a ripoff for all of us oh yeah it felt very much like like they were just capitalizing and profiting off of us being there they're selling tickets obviously with our names like you can meet Alicia you can yeah. watch Remy in this panel but it's weird being a creator because you also want to feel valued. I, I know yeah. it feel, It sounds so weird and it's a weird conversation that I have with myself a lot where I'm like, I still have that inner fangirl in me where I'm like, oh yeah. my God, VidCon's inviting me. But also you have to see yourself as value as a brand and as a creator where it's like, well, you know what? If like brands are paying me X amount to do posts for whatever product, VidCon should technically be also paying you yeah. to attend. But it's not that. They mm -hmm. just profit and they make all this money off of creators coming and they, they kind of use that that like inner fangirl that we all have to do so. Yes. My favorite experiences with the playlist lives, with the VidCon, with all of these conventions. And I just realized probably people from those teams are going to be listening to this. So, hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's up? And for, I mean, I, I, I feel the same way. And that's why I feel like a lot of us don't talk about these things. But like, it is kind of fucked up. I think for me, I my favorite memories were the ones where I met other creators, we're all in the same room, we're like so excited to be there and we're not, it's not too much of a business for us. We're like, we did wanna like, let's go walk the floor, like let's go meet fans. Like I loved meeting fans so much, but during that time, I remember I would make so many videos. I'd be like, guys, I'm gonna be at VidCon, you can meet me, like I wanna meet you guys, like please come to my meetup or like, oh my God, I, I actually got a meetup, please come, please come. But then slowly but surely you realize like, oh, I'm like doing all of this and like, they're not really treating us that well, mm -hmm. you know? It's not even about the money. It's about like, um, I mean, kind of is about the money. But <laughs> I think it's like for it's us as like individual people, like us as people, like me as Remy Cruz, you as Alicia Marie, like we're like still so excited. Of course we want to meet all these people that like support us and yeah. that's amazing. But then when you think on the other side, like as a business, you're like, well, this isn't, like paying this yeah. isn't this isn't equal also the time and energy that like goes into it like it's a lot but I think what started to happen was we started having meetups on our own like whether that's through like podcasting or whether that's through like um you know other meetups that we've done with other brands throughout or the years or at the mall or, or at, at the mall Disneyland whatever or something yeah I want everyone to know also I'm not not showing up because I'm not being paid like I'm not one of those people but I just as a creator want to feel like it's fair yeah. and I truly have felt for so long like they've taken advantage of people who are just willing to go who are willing to go and who are excited to go and I still am one of those people like I love meeting all of my subscribers and viewers and supporters and things but like to me it also needs to feel fair on the on yeah. the behalf of like whoever's sending me there so um like this year the reason I chose to not go was I got an email and it was like you're invited I'm like yay like, congrats yeah congrats you're invited. you get to come and then it was like but you must do at least two of these and it was a list of panel meet and greet da 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 and I was like well 
like that's yes. just it, I just it felt so transactional and it, I didn't like that like I want to just go and be excited and like choose to like oh my god I I've, of course I want to do a meet and greet I do a meet and greet every time I go and I get to meet like 500 people but still it's like on the VidCon sign it's not fair to us you know what I just realized hmm. what these conventions are missing completely in their like businesses is having like create creator managers like if you had your person reach out to you and was like hey Remy like if it was more personal mm. and it was a person an actual person her name's like Sarah or something right that's funny I looked at Sarah and I said Sarah <laughs> that's hilarious you would be more inclined to go because you have that personal, personal relationship and you're so but when you just so right. get it from a random person's name at vidcon.com blah 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 and it's like congrats you're invited here's the list of things to do just for you to go mm -hmm. you know at least at, on these other platforms YouTube Instagram there, like there are people and we have made personal relationships with them do you know what I mean like yeah I think that's something that they're drastically missing because it does feel very, very transactional. Um, it may, it feels like you're doing them a huge favor. I just, I remember being so sad when the times when I used to be so excited to shout out my meetup or like, hey guys, like you can come meet me. I'm so excited. I would talk about it multiple, multiple, multiple times because they then started presenting it with a list of deliverables. It made me never shout out my VidCon. Like I, I think the last three times I ever went, I never once said I was having a meetup. Because I was like, I feel like this is... It's a way for them to sell tickets. Yeah, unless it was like, oh, I have to say it. Then I'd be like, okay, then I have to say it. They should have an affiliate program. They should be like, hey, you get a commission off of the link. If people use your link and buy a ticket, then you get a percentage from that. I much rather would throw a pretty basic live show yes! where we make, we like, just so you guys know, we make very little to no money yeah. on pretty basic live shows because you have to pay for everything that goes into it. And that's so fine with us. Like we're not doing that to make money. Like again, I must drill in. This is not a money thing. It just always needs to feel fair I, as a creator and you have to value yourself as a creator. And we get protective over our audience. And I'm like, yo, if I'm asking you to spend three to 400, even with hotel experience, like all of that, like a thousand dollars on something, I'd rather like not meet you for five seconds in a meetup line. And then have a security guard being like, go, go, yeah. next, Like, next. I want to be able to, like, like, the live show, I think, is perfect. They come, they get us for two hours just on us. Imagine we're like, so you can come to our live show. <laughs> <laughs> There's no live show we're doing um, a on the books. Tour. Okay, this is all a promo for the live. Just kidding. <laughs> um, but they get to see us live and then have the meet and greet aspect if they want that. Like, I feel like you ju they just get more out of it. I feel like we get more out of it versus, like, that type of situation. So that's kind of been our experience with these conventions. Used to love them turned into just meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting. I would I would hardly even see you. Yeah, we'd like pass each other in the hallway and be like, going here. Everyone, yes, yeah, so I'd be like, hey, oh, meet this way. Yeah, yeah, I have a Spotify meeting. I have this meeting. Which and we also understand it's a business. Like VidCon is a business. There are many people that are employed under VidCon that like these are their jobs. I totally understand that. Yeah. I just wish that they were able to incentivize creators more and like make us feel valued more than just like you get this like jacket in this room and this and that room, like go home with a goodie bag, like as exciting as a goodie bag is and I love I just want to feel like they care about me and I think having those personal relationships is what they're missing yeah I agree maybe they'll listen to this I know we're, we're probably never getting invited again but that's okay no watch next year we're invited we're like the faces <laughs> <laughs> they're like pretty faces because we're like, like here's our creator here's our creator <laughs> person that's our personal experience but then why we were asked to talk about this so much is because of our personal experience and the pure pandemonium that we've seen throughout the years. I remember one year I was back in the green room and I got a DM from one of my favorite subscribers, which no, I don't have favorites, but I love you, Derek. He messaged me <laughs> and he was like, oh my God, Remy, Eli just knocked me over on the way to like run after like a David Dobrik, like vlog squad, something, something. And I was like, oh my, this is like six years ago, truly. And I was like, oh my God, Derek, I'm so sorry. And I like called Eli. I was like, Eli, you cannot like, you are a representation he was of working the Miss for you at that brand. You cannot be knocking down people, especially subscribers and trying to run after a crowd. And he's like, I'm sorry. He's like, it's like screaming. Yeah. Like people were running. It honestly was a safety hazard, but- that's what it used to be. And then as we saw on TikTok and YouTube and Instagram and all social media this year, apparently VidCon was very dead this year and very quiet. And I mean, we even heard from people on our teams that like, like old meet and greets used to be insane. And like, everybody was always very polite, but just like very excited and loud and screaming. This year they were like quiet, very like to themselves, I which I think is pretty crazy. Well, I want to dive into it. Cause yeah, I got a text from my manager and she was like, whoa, VidCon is so weird this year because obviously we didn't go. And I was like, wait, wait, what do you mean? She was like, it's quiet. 
And I was like, what do you mean quiet? Yeah. If anything, Those it's, don't go it's together. never quiet. Yeah. And she was like, I'll send you a video. Sends me a video of the meetup room. You could hear a pin drop. And granted, maybe it was just, I, no, no. I don't even they think should it, play some music or something. I That's know. a little awkward. And it was weird because again, from our experience, like those rooms were so loud. Like people were cheering. They were like screaming. Like it was wa- fun. It was so fun. Yeah. So it, it did feel kind of dead. And it made me wonder why. So I even asked her, I was like, what about it? Like, what do you think? And she, she was saying, I think because there's a lot of TikTokers here, the way that people used to feel connected to those old MagCon days, to the O2L days, to YouTubers back then when it was really hard and that was the only way to see your favorite YouTuber when you did feel a personal connection. Because I will say one thing that I think a lot of TikTokers struggle to do is be able to have a close connection. I think it's really hard because it's such a small amount of time to show your personality. And if someone does want to binge watch your videos, like the app isn't set up to watch, like to scroll and see the same person, you would have to go to their profile, then start scrolling, right? Versus YouTube, if you subscribe to someone, you're supposed to be able to see all their videos in your sub box, sometimes supposed supposed to, (laughs) Um, or it's easier to binge watch someone, I think when it comes to YouTube and feel more connected to them. I completely agree with that. I think it made perfect sense to me why VidCon was the way that it was this year because it was predominantly TikTokers because TikTok was a sponsor. I, as we all know, I'm obsessed with TikTok. I follow so many people. I keep up with so many people, but I could, if, if you put them in a lineup, I could like spot them. But if you, out of 10 TikTok creators, I could maybe tell you two of their names and two of their screen names Yes, because, or usernames, whatever it is, AOL, because TikTok is so short form. It's so quick. You're watching more so for the content, yep. not for the person. For the creator, yeah. And so I remember, I mean, I did a lot of research about just like the VidCon situation of this year. And there were so many people commenting, like just the general public being like, these TikTokers are now realizing that a million TikTok followers is completely different than a million YouTube subscribers. And bringing it back to Emma's podcast episode, I think I know a lot of people were kind of upset or not even upset. I think a lot of creators were discouraged by that podcast episode because she was like, influencing is dead, blah, blah, blah. But I knew what she was trying to say. And that's what she was trying to say. She was like, having a million followers isn't what it used to be for this reason, because there are so many people I follow on TikTok who you could have them in a room and I, they'd be like, who are these people? I wouldn't know because I just like, I hit follow or I don't know their name. Like I'm less invested than how I am. I'm not going to say on YouTube because there are, I'm also subscribed to people on YouTube that I'm like, oh, I didn't know I'm subscribed to you. And I think, is it oversaturation of just creators in general? And it reminds me kind of back to even television, like when there were only five shows that we all watch, like that is what has changed from the Lizzie McGuire era, the Hannah Montana era. Like you came home from school and you watched that. Like there were only so many sources of entertainment for us to consume. And you had to wait for an episode versus now being able to have anything you want anytime you can binge watch any show, you can watch anything, you can go on TikTok, you can go on, like, I think that alone, as amazing as it is that anyone can do this, it does make it harder to curate such a dedicated audience. And I think it really comes down to being able to show your personality, to be able to relate to them, to be able to like, you know, stand out. Cause I follow so many people, even on Instagram, and I couldn't even tell you their name. And then I feel so embarrassed when they come up and I'm, they're like, you follow me? And I'm like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I like, remember there was one time where there's this girl on TikTok that I really liked and she was her whole shtick. That's the thing is I feel like you need a shtick. Her whole thing was cutting, you know, how bagels are normally cut in half. Yeah. She would cut her bagels into fourths. So you would take a half and then cut them into like essentially bagel thins. And so it was a better way to like stuff things into a bagel. So it was yeah. like a loaded bit. Ba- I was like, this is ingenious. Oh my God. And so I filmed a vlog of me. I happened to be making a bagel and I was like, oh, I'm going to cut my bagel in fourths. I saw this girl on TikTok do it, but I didn't credit the girl because uh-huh. To be fully honest, I didn't even know her name. I couldn't even like find her username because I didn't know what to search. I was yeah. like, I was searching like literally like bagel, bagel cutting. Cut. <laughs> no, li- I didn't know. Like she wasn't mad. She was just like calmed and she's like, LOL, like this is me or something like that. And I was like, oh, I felt really bad mm-hmm. because I didn't know. But to me, like that really stood out to me. And I was like, oh my God, I don't know a majority of the people that I follow on TikTok same. And also I don't want to say this is just a TikTok thing. No. I think short form, reels, shorts. No, all that no, stuff. no. I think oh. just in general and all social media, like I think that it um 
is a sign that, you know, YouTube plaques used to be when you hit a million, this giant, like framed, like literally three foot by two foot, heavy 50 pound plaque where, you know, they would like engrave it, put your name on it, everything. Whereas now, because so many people are hitting million, a million subscribers, they had to make it smaller and less or more cost effective for them. Yeah. To me, when I saw they changed it, I was like, oh my God, more and more people are hitting a million every day. So for me, when I saw that, obviously it was just a direct tangible thing to see of how saturated every single industry is becoming and every single yeah. platform. Um, but I that's think, not a bad thing. No, 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 no. I just think it's really interesting. And I think the difference though with TikTok is that the reason why TikTok is so big, first of all, it's just because it's short form. Yeah. It's entertaining for people with short attention spans like myself. You can learn literally whatever you want in just such a quick three minute, one minute, 15 second video, whatever it may be. But I do think TikTok provides virality mm -hmm. to any. The ability to go viral to literally anybody. Yes. Like the person who literally lives in the unit next to us yeah. could be TikTok famous. And we yeah. have literally no idea. And, oh, okay. So on the episode that I filmed with TK when you were gone, I, I said as an analogy, and it resonated with a lot of people. So if you didn't hear that, I basically said, when you're making content, you have to figure out, are people watching me to learn how to make pancakes or they're watching me make pancakes? Like there's a very different thing between someone who's looking at the content that you're making versus they're like, I don't care what you do, Remy, but it's you and I'm going to watch it. And both are fine. Both are totally fine. But I think a lot of people who are on the more tutorial-esque side or people who are being watched for simply their content and not so much for their personality, they get very discouraged and confused when they go to a meetup and no one comes. Now, I'm not saying that's everyone, especially coming from someone who had multiple meetups where people didn't come. Like, same, same. It is We've all the been there. most... And I have to say this for those creators. It is the most discouraging thing ever. Like there's no way to not take it personal. Like we've, we can share these statements right now. Like I had a meetup and I, I can't, I like reached out to a brand. I was like, oh my God, I like, can you please have goodie bags? Like I want to be able to give <laughs> things. I want to give things to the people who come. Wait. It was me, Ava, Mia. Like it was a group of us, Where right? This? Santa Monica Pier. <gasps> I didn't know about this. I go with five goodie bags from Benefit Cosmetics. Shout out Benefit Cosmetics. So back then they gave a fuck about me even. And riding. I was no one then. They were riding. They were ride or dies. I left with two goodie bags. Aww, <laughs> I thought they were gonna be. I, I thought they were gonna be. And they all came out at different places and all of them were like, oh, I thought there were gonna be a lot of people here. <laughs> me, Ava and Mia were like, <laughs> like, like let's, I was just like, and then we are like, oh my God, we can't find anyone. Like maybe we're at the back of the pier. We go to the back of the pier. We're like, maybe we should say we're here. Like, let's go to the ride. We're like, hey guys, we're at the ride. Oh, literally. And, and so even in that situation, I realized it's not, even if you have, and I think I had 150,000 like subscribers then. I think Ava had like 200,000, like, the, the, you know, time, place, like there's so many factors that go into this. And even stuff like VidCon and conventions, like half your fans have to like fly in. Like not all your say. fans live in Anaheim. Even money, like like it's expensive to book a hotel, to buy the pass. Like there's so many things. So coming from someone who's had that, it makes you feel so less than it. It just makes you want to quit. Yeah. I mean, I also have had meet and greets where literally no one came. And I I think to those people, if, if it was you at VidCon or if you do have meetups and nobody comes. I think it's just really important to remember that like everybody's doing their own thing, especially like at VidCon. I'm sure there were so many people who know you who would have loved to be there, but they were just busy in the moment and mm -hmm. that's, it's okay. It is like, okay. It's, it's really not something that I feel like we should be like, it's not, it's nothing to be embarrassed no. of. It's something you can laugh I mean, on. I, we are years <laughs> later from our Michael's meet and greets and we laugh at it every day. Um, I had another meet and greet and this is where, oh my God, this is tea. This is where I struggle with knowing my worth as a brand and not. <laughs> <laughs> I had a meetup and it was also with Mia and we were in some random, random like Texas place. We were doing like a pop-up meet and greet. And from the brands, like what I had to do con contractually with the brand was XYZ post, blah, blah, blah. I had already fulfilled all of my um, posts that I had to do. So I was like, oh, I'm not gonna shout this out because they should be paying, right? No one comes. No one came. Aww. I think one person came. Mia and I sat there in a cell phone store because that's where it was. And we just like chilled for, we had to be there for like two hours. We had like banners and signs and the brand was like, oh my God, like, oh, so sorry. Like no one came. Keep in mind, the one that we did a month before had 1200 people there oh and they God. had to send people away. 
So from the creator side, like, you know, you go, you expect there to be like these lines, like it's hit and miss. It depends on so many different factors, but I maybe literally everyone just happens to be busy. And like that, that is very plausible. Yes. That's the thing. And the day that it's on, blah, 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 whatever. And I remember thinking, Alicia, yes, you know your worth and only do like this brand should be paying X, Y, Z. I was like, however, as the influencer, like, I don't want to have a meetup where no one comes. So if that means me doing an extra post here or there, it is worth it. So I think now, then I wish I put my ego aside and was like, what's she worse? girl boss too close to the sun. Girl boss a little too hard. I was like, what is worse? Having a meetup and no one coming or doing an extra like Twitter post yeah. or doing a, just a quick story being like, hey guys, if you live in the area, I'm here. You can take it down. Mm -hmm. Like I think egos get so in the way when it comes to influencers and they're like, well, I'm not going to post because they should be paying me and like whatever. What's the point of being an influencer if no one's fucking coming? That brand's never going to want to work or work with you again because mm -hmm. they're like, oh, they don't have any pull. So that's where I struggle with. And even to this day, there's times where I'm like, you know what? I want to do an extra post because I want to versus whatever. And I think that's where my advice to other creators is put your ego aside. And yes, if you're if you truly feel like, no, they should be paying for this, that's fine. But if you also feel like, you know what, like in the end, is it worth the extra post? Do that. I do think there's more that can be done to help creators. Cause I don't think it's all about the creators. Like we've had meetups that weren't promoted well and no one came. And of course we internalized that. And it was not, it's not on us to it promote it well. Well, yeah. I mean, yes, it is like halfway, but it should be an equal part. It wasn't anything about you at your meetup. It wasn't that no one cares, no one's there. It, was, it wasn't it was promoted well. So like no one knew about it. No one knew the time. It was hard to figure out wh when and where. Like even for us at VidCon, we've had fans come up and granted there's times people can just mix things up, but they're like, wait, th it made it seem like it was at this stage and I went to that stage and you weren't there. Like little things like that. I think making it very smooth for fans to be able to, to meet their favorite creators too. I think also platforms can do a better job at showcasing other creators whether mm -hmm. that's people of color whether that is smaller creators whatever LGBT, it may be yes yeah, yeah. anybody under the sun I think like I what I did love about YouTube was they were doing that spotlight for a while yeah. I don't know if they're doing that anymore I haven't seen it in a while but I do think that yeah. was a great way I think even like the algorithm helping you know changing that to help yeah. people just boost newer creators I think it's a really important thing to keep everybody inspired to keep creating yeah. because it's a beautiful thing I think it's an amazing thing that everyone is an influencer I think that's so special as long as everybody is fulfilling their creative outlet like that's a, a beautiful thing I don't yeah. think it's a negative thing to think about at all it's very blatant to me as a creator who's in it the, div the difference between being on different platforms mm -hmm. but I also like going through TikTok comments it's crazy to see how the general public is also seeing it now I remember even this meme going around it was like would you rather have a million TikTok followers or a hundred thousand YouTube subscribers mm. and every reply on Twitter was YouTube. Yep. It's it's so interesting to me. I saw someone say it this way and it made so much sense. Social media has now be just become a simple like marketing medium, right? It is a marketing tool that's out there. There are brands who are really utilizing and learning how to market correctly. But just because you're learning to market correctly, if you're a brand and you're like, oh my God, yeah, we have like all of our TikToks hit 6 million views, da, 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 da. It means so much. It doesn't mean that their ROI or return of investment is good. It doesn't mean people are actually buying the products. It also doesn't mean that that brand is an influencer, is a content creator. They're simply utilizing how to market in this age. What I think is interesting is we used to see social media as one thing. You follow people who you like and you watch their stuff. Now brands are on it. They're utilizing it. Um, even like e-news and like like all of these big publications are also using tiktok so clearly it's not just you follow internet personality it used to be like a little forum you'd follow internet personalities and that's what youtube was and then it, it evolved into more where like celebrities are getting on board that's another huge way how this shift has happened in culture and i think when emma came out with her podcast episode those a lot of newer creators were discouraged because they're like well, you've already made it. How, like you're saying that things are like dying and dead. And she's saying, no, like what it used to be where you would just follow people. That is kind of dead. I, I will say, so I didn't listen to the Emma episode, but I did see a lot of people on TikTok talking about it. And one thing that what I gathered she talked about is how uh, now everybody, you know, it used to be like a, a, a group of people that were influencers and now everybody's trying to be an influencer. If you go on TikTok, you know, every, there, there are so many, every, mm -hmm. everyone on TikTok is an influencer. So she was like basically saying how the fact that 
if everyone is an influencer, then no one is an influencer. And that's the idea of quote unquote influencing is going to die. But I personally disagree with that because I think that the difference when I, I think specifically TikTok, because TikTok is what spun everything on its head, the whole idea of social media. I think that, you know, People are all trying to go viral. That's like Mm -hmm. the whole point of TikTok. Everybody wants views. They want likes. They want all these sorts of things. They want to be in the creator fund. They want to make money. They want this to be a job. Or honestly, they might not even want it to be a job. They just want to go viral and say they have like X amount of followers on TikTok. It's kind of like when things are rare, you know, like diamonds, for instance, like if everyone has something, the value of it goes down because it's like less rare. So I think what she's saying is it used to be rare to have a million followers, but if everyone has that, is that now zero? That is what she said. Yeah. But I do think I'm sorry, I'm just going to talk about TikTok specifically because that's what I'm thinking about. But I think personally, even if everybody on TikTok has a million followers, it just depends on whether or not they want to build their audience from there. I think there are so many, like the person who's literally checking you out at Target might have posted like some funny old videos with them and their friends, just threw it up on TikTok. It got super viral and they got a million followers overnight. Just like JC, when she Uh was like, I just grew like 200,000 overnight from like one video. Like it's from there deciding, okay, well, do I want to, keep at this or do I just want to have a million followers 200,000 however many followers from these random videos and just like say like oh you know I have 250,000 on TikTok it's like do you want to keep actively posting do you want to try and make this a career do you want to do that because if you do cool if you don't and it still can happen and I think that's where people I don't I don't think Emma meant like no one will be influencers in the future even though that's how it sounded which was discouraging to people what it reminds me of is I remember Gary Vee always saying this he was like a lot of people say they're an entrepreneur because it's easy doctors have to get a doctorate to call themselves a doctor You don't question when someone says their name, doctor, whatever, you're like, oh shit, they've put in the work, they've made it, boom. When someone's an entrepreneur, like it's harder to tangibly- Prove it. Prove it. (laughs) So I think what's gonna happen is, yes, anyone can give them self-titled, I'm an influencer, even if they have one brand deal. I feel like it's an easy title to give yourself, but I do think there is gonna be a difference from the people who are posting videos and and they kind of just do it on the side versus someone who has like a full on career in it And I think that's where it just feels muddy because it's like, I do think it's not about followers. And I think that's the main thing. Someone could have a million followers and like no one really know who they are or like whatever, or there can be, I think I see this a lot with the um, fashion and blogger type world. Those people are killing it, making so much money, but it's so niche. It's so niche. And I see this all the time. There's a lot of influencers who have a lot of followers. Let's say they have like 10 million followers and they see some of these more like, Um, put together like fashion girlies going to all these crazy cool events and they're like why are they getting invited I have way more followers and I'm like you don't get it in their niche they are top tier it's not about followers even though you have 10 million your demo doesn't match this niche so you being like well why are they on this revolve trip or why are they on this blah 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 that's unfair it's not unfair because in the end all these brands are just wanting to work with people who can sell their product yeah so the fashion world is so niche and so small. Like, are we offended we're not invited to like certain fashion shows? No. Absolutely not. Absolutely <laughs> not. If we were to sit here and be like, well, I deserve to be there. I have a lot of followers. Like that's that's not it. So I think this like, I think my best advice, I don't even know if it's making sense, but my best advice for creators and people, if you do want to influence and if you were discouraged feeling like, oh, is, influ- oh, is that world dead? Brands are just more picky and they want to find people who will sell their shit. Before, it, with YouTube, uh, the OG knowledge coming through, it used to be a flex with your subscribers. Like brands wanted me to be like, well, how many subscribers do you have? How many subscribers do you have? Then quickly brands realized, wait, they can have subscribers and that doesn't mean they get that many views. So then it switched. Well, how many views do you get? How many views do you get? Like, what's your views? Then it even switched. Well, like, how's your engagement? How many likes are you getting? Like, so that just shows how it's not just about followers. And I think that's what Emma was trying to say. Like followers in the end don't mean that much. If you're trying to have a career out of this, there's more to it. What's your engagement? Even like small projects we've done, like we had to do that to prove to other brands how many like, you know, things can you sell to do? Like, you know, like for instance, we wanted to come out with bigger projects. Let's say we wanted to come out with a makeup line tomorrow. If we go to these manufacturers, they don't give a shit how many followers we have. They want to see our merch sales. They want to see how many products we can actually sell. And I think that is the knowledge we've learned over the years of what goes into this more. Going back to what you're saying, yes, there's a huge difference between virality. And if you want to make this a career, and if if you want to make this a career, you can do it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how saturated the space is. No, it doesn't. If you are doing what you love and you're posting what you like, people are going to catch on to it 
because there is a niche for, as I've said this a billion times, there is a niche for literally everything. If you love candles, if ah. you love air fryers and you want to do TikTok reviews on air fryers, let me tell you, there is an air fryer market and it is me and I will be watching. Like there is a niche for everything. So as long as you're posting about things that you like and you're gaining traction and you keep posting, you will find an audience. And there is a career in this. It's not going anywhere, but I think there's just going to be a lot fewer people who who do successfully make it a career because they're able to see that it's more than just posting videos that have a lot of views. For sure. And I think that's where the disconnect is for a lot of people who are getting views on TikTok. And, and we've had so many conversations with specifically TikTokers who are like, I'm already burnt out. I don't know what I'm doing. And it just shows how like views are, can be very empty. Like focus on your audience and like focus on that family. And if it's a hundred people, I like Alicia Marie just said views are empty. Literally. I know. Who would have thought? Four Who years ago. Thought? I would have been like, oh my God, this didn't hit whatever. But yes, difference between viral. Not every single hit's going to be a home run. Mm-hmm. And if you only got home runs, it would lose the feeling. You know what I mean? If you went up to uh, baseball analogy, if you hit a home run every single time, you'd be like, cool, another home run. But if you are making base hits, if you're like doing like crazy st stuff, then you hit a home run, AKA viral video. It means more. You're like, fuck yeah, I got a home run. I think that's more of the conversation, less of like everybody's an influencer than no one's an influencer. I don't believe that because there are so many different niches and so many different interests and there's something for everybody. Mm -hmm. So I think it's less of that conversation and more about the content that you're specifically creating. Yes. Uh, going back to why I did not listen to Emma's podcast though, as someone who is a well-established creator and me just hearing the general consensus of, this is what I thought she talked about, was if everyone's an influencer, then no one is an influencer. Then it got in my head like, holy shit, am I not gonna have a career anymore? Because this is some, I, I'm someone who's been a well-established creator slash influencer for many years. Literally, it's the only job that I've ever had in my life. So when I started to hear that conversation, I, which I feel like a lot of people wonder, like, do you guys freak out ever? I freaked out. Yeah. And I was like, fuck, is that true? I think about this all the time. Then I started talking to like friends that work at brands. I had a freak out too. People as in, in the industry. And I'm like, am I going to have a job in a few years? Like, it, am I going to be okay? And ultimately we will never know. But that is also why we diversified. That is why I don't only have one channel. I have two YouTube channels. We have a podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, I create merch. I have things in cooking the cooking with world. Remy. Exactly. Like, so that is the only thing that I can find solace in is knowing that I have di diversified. So I have a better safety net to fall back on. But truthfully, we will never know. And I think that's also why a lot of newer creators are freaking out more because they do have one sole platform. I also freaked out for a split second because I was thinking, oh my God, how, like, what am I going to be doing in five years? Is this dead? Whatever. If Emma says it, it's true. I know, I know, I know. But what was so interesting was I was talking to Ollie about it. And he brought this up to me and it changed my entire perspective. He was like, the change, that culture change that she's talking about has already happened. And it made me take a few steps back and realize when I'm looking at the huge timeline of the influencer world, those older like YouTube days, those older like MagCon whatever days, you know, where it was kind of weird to do it. That has, it's already changed. So we don't need to freak out about this culture shift because it's already changed. You can find someone who has 6 million followers about plants and have no idea who they are. And they're a random person, you know, living in Louisiana. We're back in the day. You're like, oh, I need to go to LA. I need to go to this to make it. And it made me like be a lot more calm. And I'm like, you're right. People used to make fun of this job and now everyone wants to do it. Like the shift has already changed. It's not what it used to be. Anyone can have a million followers. And also there's people who I know who have a million followers and they're like, oh yeah, I don't want to do this. Like this, haha, that's funny. It happened. But like, I want a normal job. I also think, and this is so important. Clearly this isn't going away anytime soon. All of these brands, Disney, YouTube, Apple, like all of these brands, it will be so normal for them to hire for this job. So even though you feel discouraged and you're like, my YouTube's not taking off, my TikTok's not taking off, maybe you're gonna work for Apple and be the fucking director of social media marketing. Like there's a whole, this has opened such a huge market and you having experience of knowing what it's like to post on TikTok or YouTube, that will still be in your future. Like right now, a lot of people only see it as like, you're an influencer and you make it or you're not. Or you're not. Yo, like you can work in this world and, like even me personally, like when I'm looking to hire people, I'm 
my main thing is I'm like, okay, I want someone who understands this world. They understand what posting is, but maybe they don't enjoy being in front of the camera. So maybe right now you're struggling and you're like, oh, nothing's taking off. And maybe like, just use this as a learning time. Like maybe, maybe one day you're going to work for Miss Remy Ashton and you have no idea. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I think, I think the idea of you post because you're an influencer is dead in the sense of there are so many more verticals you can do. I think also the quote unquote idea of what, of the word influencer has completely changed yep. too. Like for us, I feel like for a long time we were so embarrassed to be like, oh, we're an influencer I know. because the whole connotation was like a vapid bitch who only cares about like hauls and as much as we love hauls and selfies and things like there's also a lot more to us. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I just think it changed so much. Like everybody might be an influencer, but I also think that's a beautiful thing. There are plant influencers. There's cooking influencers. There are car, like car mechanic influencers. Like I feel like we don't even need to call them influencers anymore. Yes. Yeah. Maybe there's a new name for it because the the amount of rug cleaning TikToks I've watched and I love that channel, but I would never, I would never pay. I'm a carpet influencer. I would never pay to go to their meetup. Do you know what I mean? Oh, I love the guy. Do you know the, the guy that does carpet who like if someone stains their carpet, they go, he goes to the closet and cuts out a piece of the carpet and like puts it in and like steams it. Oh my God. No, I just watched oh. the, the guy where they put it in the huge thing and they have the huge power hose. I, ca- I love it. Yeah. Yes. And it's like nasty yes. shit coming up. Yeah. But prime example. I don't know if that guy'd be like going to VidCon to have a meetup, but, but like you- even if he did, I think that like it's something that I think it depends on what kind of niche content you're creating also. yes but from their perspective when they're like what do you mean I get 10 million views of video like people love me they're watching for the content like yes maybe you do have like some diehard fans but I think those are the people right now who are struggling where they're like wait I like why is no one coming I think also just using your carpet man as a yeah an in- it's a great one <laughs> yeah an analogy right now um I think even for this carpet man if you were to listen yeah he might be getting 10 million views on a video but I mean, you and I might be watching his content. We don't really have carpets to clean like that. So even if he were to like sell, let's say he gets a brand deal to sell like a special carpet cleaner. Yeah. He might not sell that much, even though he's getting 10 million views, because what if like 9.8 million of those views are, we don't even own carpets. We're just watching because it's interesting. But he might be confused and being like, well, I get 10 million views. How am I not selling 10 million bottles of this carpet cleaner? It really depends on your audience and the the content that you're making, the audience and the person creating. Yeah. Especially, especially with people who don't talk in their content. For instance, carpet guy. I don't know his name. I don't know how he talks. Bagel girl. Bagel girl. Sorry, bagel I think, girl. Not, actually, I looked her up recently. She really? stopped making videos, but oh, no. love what you did for the bagel community. <laughs> I think Emily Mariko is a perfect example who has adapted and changed. Like people don't realize she did YouTube for such a long time. Obviously her ASMR stuff became very trendy and people started jumping on board with that, but she's now started to show more of her own personality. So I do think she's an exception of that where if she was to post, like if she was to do a meet and greet, I think more people would come because they like can understand her a little bit more now. Yeah. I think if it were in just the that salmon era, bowl era, yeah. I don't think as many people would have come. No, me either. But I think she's done a good job. And now, you know, she still does YouTube. So she's she shows, killing yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, killing prime it. example though, like views are empty unless you pour into your community. Wow. That's the, that's, that's, that's it. Bow on top. That's it. Damn. Any other thoughts? I think it's a good learning lesson to start pouring more into your community. Start showcasing your personality more. Maybe literally say your name and like, like, hi, I'm blank. So they can kind of get to know you a little more. So you form that connection with the viewer. Because if you are just going to be on TikTok, it is fleeting. Or maybe transition over to YouTube. Yeah. Try making YouTube videos where there's longer form content where people can get to know you better. Form that connection with you. Because truly, we wouldn't be sitting here where we are today if we hadn't started when we did. And also yeah. start started on YouTube. How are ways that you feel like you pour into your audience? They can be small, they can be big. I think remembering subscribers, I think like forming like actual genuine connections with people and then also like reaching out to them. Like I know so many subscribers and their whole life stories and they update me and I'll FaceTime people like just catching up with people to just like get to know them because I genuinely care. Um, I think listening to them and it's been hard for me to take constructive criticism throughout the years, but I feel like I'm at a really good place now where I realize like, I think I can weed out constructive criticism and just mean criticism and give the audience what they want to watch. So whether that's like content ideas or changing like I've changed my editing so many different times the closet video that we did remember the one where you edited for me oh, the Mr. Mary Brand yes Mr. <laughs> Mary Brand but like I, I love hearing that because ultimately they're the ones who are watching it yeah. I want to give them the content that they're looking for of course to a T where I'm like okay well this is still my video and I want it to be how I want it but I also want to listen to them and give them things that they also were interested yeah. in watching I remember 
at the height of my viral views on YouTube, I realized, oh, if I don't really do an intro and don't talk much and get straight into the point, I get more views. Mm. It was very simple. So I kept doing that. Wow. I got a lot of views. Yeah. <laughs> And then, then no one came to the meeting. And then no one came to the main group. Maybe was it was around era? that time. Yeah, I think about maybe it. that's why. Yeah. And then I started realizing, well, and that it's so funny how just we, ha- we naturally figured this out. You know what I mean? I realized, oh, it's worth it to throw up a Q&A every now and then because then people feel connected. I think this is where our vlog channels, the amount of creators who have come up to both of us and said, how are your fans so dedicated? And I'd be like, yo, it's our vlog channel. And we did vlogging before it was like, we did vlogging before it was trendy. But people felt connected to us. And I realized even with my main channel, if I don't leave in my personality, yeah, I'll get views, but they don't know who I am. Yeah. And I think, yes, there are times where you have to sacrifice. Oh, will will this just go viral? Or do I want to leave in that story about that time I went on this date or that time when I got ghosted? Like there's there's a given pull of when you're just chasing views and all of that to say, we realize leaving in more of your personality, doing a Q and a every now and then, and maybe it won't get viral views. That still is better for your brand and your community as a whole, because it helps those dedicated people where we've been on the side too, where we see, we upload a Q and a and we're like, Oh, it does so bad. Like no one cares, blah, blah, blah. Even if 10,000 people watch it and you're used to getting a million views, that is 10, thousand people who give a fuck about what you ate for breakfast. I was going to say, who cared to know what your middle name is? Who cared to know what your parents' names are? And when you put it in that perspective, like I would, I would true, like right now, I think I have 8 million on my main channel. How many do you have on your main channel? Two point something. I know we would both much rather have a hundred thousand followers with a hundred thousand views every single time. Like, and I know it's, it may be like, oh, it's easy for you to say because you have that. It's like, no, we've experienced what it's like. And we would rather have people like, devoted and care about us as people and I think that's also where what I mean that's what I mean when I say views can be very empty and yeah like they're cool and they're viral and you can get a nice little check every now and then unless you're on TikTok because that creator fund sucks Mm -hmm. but yeah that's just what I was trying to say I think someone who while you're talking that came to mind who I think is doing a beautiful job is my sweet little baby corn aka pepperoni muffin who showcases her personality perfect like absolute perfection on tiktok and has done a really great job also of transitioning over to youtube where you literally get her same personality just for 12 more minutes Uh uh-huh she has done and there's a reason why she is so big and why she is the way that she is it's because she literally just sits there and shows her personality and i think that you and i could take a note from her also yeah from like i watch her tiktoks i'm just like i've talked to her i'm like how do you do that oh no i love how do you do it but she's someone else who i'm sure she's fine with us saying this but she came to us and she was like i really want to do youtube but i'm scared like it's so much it's like really hard there's a lot of work that goes into it like but then from our side we were asking her like questions about tiktok and how many times do you you post eight times a day like what how do you do that because to uh, it's just interesting what we can learn from those creators and what they can learn from us um but it is really interesting when you do have creators coming to you saying no we got youtube like how do you do it like that's the goal and i think there's just stuff People from both platforms can learn from each other. Or Instagram too. Whenever I go on a Revolve trip, most of the girls there are Instagram girls. And they're like, you do YouTube? Like, how do you do YouTube? Like, it's just so funny how like every, we're all doing quote unquote social media, but then every platform has its own communities and creators. And it's also different for all of us. So I just think it's very interesting and a nice conversation to have. And I'm sure if we circled back on this conversation in six months to a year, it'd be a whole other conversation. Yeah. Another thing I think Emma was trying to say, but maybe didn't articulate it well, is the idea of, you know how when a celebrity joins Instagram and you're like, they only have 20,000 followers. And you're like, yeah, it doesn't matter if they have 20,000 followers. They're still fucking whoever they are. You know what I mean? No, I've never thought that. Oh my God, really? I've heard influencers be like, oh my God, I have more followers than Julia Roberts. Or like, I have more followers than so-and-so. She's still Julia Roberts. And she's still fucking Julia, Julia Roberts. Roberts. Hurts. <laughs> um, or uh, George Clooney. People or, think that? I've had That's influencers. That's so annoying. That, again, it's an ego thing. It's being like, I have more followers than them. It's like, it doesn't matter because they're them. It doesn't and I, matter, they're Julia Roberts. They're literally <laughs> Julia Roberts, you know? I think that's what Emma was saying about like celebrity. Like, just because you have followers, it doesn't mean you're going to be a celebrity. Even going off of what she said about even though like we've become numb to numbers. And I think that's something that I feel bad for newer creators because when we hit 
a thousand followers and subscribers. We saw, I, I made a cake. When I hit a hundred thousand, I made a cake. When I made 500, like we celebrated those because we're like, holy shit, this is huge. And now just because you're right, like so many people have hit those milestones. It, it does feel less like crazy you know I, mean, I mean someone like corn literally sorry i was going I to kirsten literally can't keep up with her millions like by the time she makes her like seven million yeah. cake she's already at eight million yeah like it's it's just crazy how viral people have gone and i'm sure it's really hard to comprehend something that i always think about because obviously starting we were it took us so long to grow an audience mm-hmm. i remember getting my senior year yearbook in high school and on the cover it said 25 it was like 2586 or something very random but i was like why is there this number that's the number of people that were at my high school oh my god from freshman year to senior year there were 2586 people and i remember thinking like holy shit it feels like there's so many people and that's really not that many so now in my head with views with literally anything or even if like i have a friend who's like a newer creator who's like i only got like i only got 50,000 views on this video i'm like that's i think so of many. my high school i'm like Imagine filling up that that football stadium. What is that? I'm so bad at math. 50 times. <laughs> like, that's crazy. Like, yeah. that's how I think of in my head. Yeah. So I do think um, in moments where we get so caught up in numbers and you just like, you know, the K really also throws you off. Yeah. Like, it looks like 2K or 200K or 250K, whatever it may be. Like, I think it's important to remember that each of those individual views is a singular person Mm -hmm. who chose to watch your video, who chose to watch your TikTok, whatever it may be. Like that is an individual person who cared enough to watch you. And that's all that matters. And that's what, that's the special part of creating content is literally connecting with someone who was watching what you're putting out. Yeah. Anyways, if you are working for those brands, you know, big comp playlists, all those conventions, uh, and you're still listening, just wanted to give you a shout out. And hopefully this was beneficial for them too. I think there is a lot that still needs to happen, whether that is having those more personal connections with these creators, making them not just feel transactional or even promoting some of these people's meetups more. You know what I mean? I agree. I think it's very interesting that the whole YouTube wave kind of started to feel a general way. And then now the TikTokers are there. And I feel like in time, the TikTokers will probably start having conversations amongst themselves and kind of feel the same way. And it's just going to be like a big wave thing. So I hope that change happens before they start to feel that or they have to feel that because it's not a fun feeling to feel. You know what I just realized? We should host a pretty basic party at one of these conventions. Mm. We can be like Vegas deep. We'd be like, you know when like Paris Hilton's like featured at a club? Well, it'll be like the after party. We'll be like the pretty basic. Do, do, sh- like and we that, will properly thing. compensate people to come. Oh, yeah, obviously. obviously. We'll be like promote pretty basic. <laughs> Put your link in your bio for two days. Two days, 10 days. It's like a week, right? What do they do? I don't know. I hope this episode was one interesting to listen to two I hope we articulated everything correctly obviously we kind of really poured into the community aspect but I don't want people thinking we were saying people who went and didn't have anyone come didn't have a good enough community because I don't think that was the case at all I think it was more so on the brand side and like I think these conventions do need to do a much better job at like promoting the these featured creators who they like are you know they're giving you so much by their time their follow like they're promoting you and having all their fans come and like, I feel like their meetups aren't getting that promoted. Make or them feel valued. Make if you're not going to pay them, at least make them feel valued. Yes. And I, you know, if you are brand listening to this, I think having those personal connections with the talent and the creators is the main thing that these conventions are missing. And I think that's something they should invest in having a team that does that. Maybe they do now. I don't know. I don't, I don't really know, but I will say from our side with these conventions, we've never really felt a personal connection and have felt more like, like just an average animal like a yes like we're just like kind of cattle like okay we have to go do this we have to go do this um and that's just our personal opinions. opinions and how we felt but my heart does go out to the creators who didn't have people show up because again we know that feeling and it fucking sucks but I hope you know it was not you in any way shape or form I know what it's like and I would have cried my eyes out too but you know what there's beauty in it because you got to take home two benefit goodie bags <laughs> I got some benefits. You got some free yeah, products. I did. <laughs> I did. I did. And I learned a lot. And I will say it has made every other meetup so like every yeah, time I, I have it. we have a show, yeah. we have a meetup. I'm always terrified no one's gonna come. Like to this day, I am terrified. 
because I had that experience, but it makes it that much more special for me to enjoy the people who do come. Cause I'm like, holy shit, people came. That happened on our last show. I was like, oh my God, people came. Yeah, I feel it every single time. Every single it's time. It's a humbling moment. I, so I am so grateful for those times because I think my ego, my God was like, no, we need to humble this bitch. Cause otherwise I'd be like, oh my God, so many people are gonna come. Like, I, th- I think it was really good. Five goodie bags, make it 5,000. Yeah, 5,000. But I think, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man. I feel like having a meetup and no one comes, it's like, you are officially a creator. Like, I feel like it's like the rite of passage yeah. to being a creator. And that's how Sue sees it. Yes, it literally feels like you got stood up on a date. Like, that's how it feels. Literally. It feels very bad. But yeah, hearts go out to you because it's not you, it's them. it's them. Also, you still have an audience. They just weren't there in that room. That's Wait, the thing. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. Um, <laughs> but anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. Uh, we love you so much. And we will talk to you next week with a new episode. Yes. Love you guys. See you later. Bye. Bye.